Hello and welcome back to SketchUp Assist. In this video, we're going to design these stringers, so stick around. Okay, whenever I start designing um, stringers, I'm typically starting with the height. If you don't have any control over the deck height, for example, if you're repairing uh, an existing uh, or you just have uh, challenges with getting a very specific height, uh, then you're going to have to work a little bit to get the proper stringer height. Now, I will say up front, there are tools available to do some of this, and then online you can find some calculators to help you uh, with determining the height. But since this channel was meant for educational purposes, uh, we're going to go ahead and go through and show you how to do it on your own. So let's start off with some measurements, and what we want to do is measure from the top of the frame down to grade, and I'm going to hit my up arrow key to tell SketchUp which direction I want to measure. Uh, and so you can see in this case we have exactly four feet. So whenever you are designing stringers for a deck, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that the, the riser height on the last step as you go to grade is going to be the thickness of your tread lower. So if you have one inch deck boards that you're using for treads, then you're going to want to make that riser one inch lower. And so you need to figure that in when you do your calculations. And so let's take a look at how I do this. Okay, so um, I have laid out here the calculations that you need to determine the riser height, depending on the deck height and the number of steps that you want. And so as I mentioned, you should note that the last step on grade should be lower than the other risers uh, by the treadboard thickness, which is generally one inch. So in the equation, we're going to put uh, together here, n is the number of risers, so that would be the, the number of steps. Uh, the riser height is what we're trying to decide. It's generally between six and seven inches, but check your local building code. And then, of course, the deck height is what we measured a few minutes ago. In this case, it's the it's 48 inches. But this is going to be the height from the top of your framing to grade. Okay, so um, we won't go through this in great detail, but basically this equation is, is saying that the deck height is going to be equal to n minus one riser. So if you're going to have uh, six risers, then... We only want to take into account five here because the last one will be shorter. Uh, so we have n minus one, where n is the number of risers, times the riser height, plus one riser height minus one inch. In this case, so the unit um, is, is inches here. We're assuming a one inch thick uh, tread. Now, when you rearrange this equation and solve for the riser height, you end up with um, this pretty simple equation where it's just your deck height plus one divided by the number of steps that you want. So this really is the takeaway. And now let's take a look at that in a spreadsheet. Okay, so here's a very simple spreadsheet. You could do this, you know, on paper or calculator or whatever, but you have your deck height. And if we slide this over a little bit so we can see our final equation is here. Let's just highlight that. Uh, we have our deck height. We have n is the number of steps, which is here in the equation. And then the riser height is going to be uh, the deck height, which is B2, plus 1, divided by B3, which is the number of steps. So all we've done is implemented our equation here. And so turns out this is an easy one. Um, but what you would normally do is substitute in different numbers of steps to kind of zero in on the, the height that you want. So what this is showing you is that if we cover this distance with six steps, each riser would be eight, eight and one sixth inches. Um, with seven steps, we saw that it's um, the, each riser height is seven inches. If we wanted to do eight steps, that would drop the riser height down to six and an eighth. So depending on what you uh, what you want and what some you know special needs may be, you can come in and kind of plug in anything to get a feeling for um, what that height may be. Okay, so here we are back on the deck. The first thing that we want to take a look at is if we're going to drop down seven inches, uh, where is our first step going to land? I don't generally have the first step extending off even with the deck. The first step is usually off of the deck. And so let's come in and pull our seven inch mark down. And so this is going to be the starting point of our steps. Now, what you're generally going to want to do in practice is put a a board here that's going to um, help support your steps. Uh, in this case, we'll go with something like a 7.5. And we're just going to put like a 36-inch set 
set of steps here and it's actually the other direction no problem just type it in and we're going to go ahead and make this a group just so it doesn't connect to our uh, stair tri uh, stringers and then I'll go ahead and come in and pull this in I'm not going to add the supports behind it in practice you would put something here to connect this board with the rest of the rim joist but that's not really the focus of this video so we'll leave that for now and we're going to click out of this now as usual there are a number of ways to do this and I'll show you how I typically do it um, I come in I'm going to grab so I'm going to one more time, I'm going to make sure I grab off of where I want to start. Zoom out. In my case here with my orientation, I'm going to hit the right arrow key, which is going to flip that around. I'm going to zoom out a little more. And I'm going to overstretch this. I don't care. I can come back and clean it up later. And then I'm going to spin around here. And I'm going to go ahead and click in and make this a group. Come in here, and I'm going to pull a rectangle. And it looks like my tread is going to be the first one, followed by my riser. And I could just come in, oops, and I could just come in and double check that's the case. Yep, that looks good. And I'm going to double click in here and make this a group. Because I'm going to use the move functionality and the, the move copy or move replication to lay out the design of my step. So I have my 10, seven. And so if I come in here, now you do have to be careful when you grab this to grab this upper corner because we want to line it up. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna hit the option key on a Mac, control on a PC, and I'm gonna lock that in and it says end point. That's good. And I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and hit times five. And that's going to take my rise and run all the way to the end. And if I come in here and pull this mark, you'll see that this last one should be six. Now, I do have a little artifact under here, and I'm going to come in here and do that. And I'm just going to swing around and clean this up. It's not really going to hurt anything, but let's just get it out of there. Okay. It's kind of hard to see that first one. I'm holding the shift key down and I'm copying all these and I'm going to intersect with the model. And then I'm going to come in and just a couple cleanups here. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because I'm not going to need that anymore. Now the way I do this typically is I'll come in and I'm going to pull a line across here. Now, what I'm looking for, the reason I pull this line, these stringers are generally cut out of uh, two by 12 material. And so the dimension of that lumber is 11.25. And so what I do is strike this temporary line across here. And then if you come in and you pull off of this, you can see, let me zoom in here so you can see how the line it's pink, so this line turns pink, and the actual line I'm pulling off turns pink. And that shows that I'm pulling perpendicular to that line, and then I'm gonna key in 11.25, and that now represents the bottom of that piece of lumber. And so now I can come in here, I'm gonna connect this to here. And then I'm going to pull this up to here. And now you have to kind of zoom in to get this right. And I'm going to pull that out now. And now I can come through here and get rid of these. And it looks like I might have missed this before. And it looks like I might have missed this before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and explode this. And so now I can actually take that out. Okay. Well, the hard part's over. Uh, we now have a, uh, we now have a stringer. Uh, there's a little bit of cleanup in here. Let's go ahead. Take some of this out. We saw the bounding box shift over there. 
and we can take out the the guide okay let's click out of it let's get rid of the rest of the guides so you can see our stringer setting up here now notice that our height from here down to the stringer well it's not direct measure let's try it here so there's seven inches and then the rest of our stringers are seven inches. Now, when we were talking about the last stringer being six inches, the, the reason you want to do this is you can kind of see here is that I'm going to put deck boards on top of the deck. I'm also going to put deck boards on the stringer. So as you look at these, these are all going to be raised up by one inch. And so that will maintain that seven inch rise. But note that we're not going to put deck boards on the ground. So whenever I put the deck boards on this last tread, that brings that up one inch, make, making that last riser seven inches. By most codes, you have to have very minimal variation from this first riser all the way to the top. Um, it's, it's often three-eighths of an inch or less. Um, and so you want to make sure, because you could, if, if you're building this and you're pulling permits and you end up, making this too high, uh, then you could get dinged on that and, and um, you'd have to do some, uh, some improvements to fix it. Um, so as I said, the hard part's kind of over. We can swing around here. What we're gonna do is click into this. I'm gonna use push-pull to pull this out one and a half inches. So now there's your stringer. And then I'm going to zoom, oops, a little too much. I'm going to zoom in here, go into move mode. I'm going to lock in on the red axis. And let me just do that one more time. So there you can see we're locked in on the red axis. And I'm going to move this over, make a copy. Move this over 12 inches times three. And then I'll simply come in here, grab this one, lock in on the red axis again, and shift it over to my mark there with my width of the steps I want. So there you go. That's the approach that I take to make these stringers. Again, you can use plugins to do this, um, but it's not so bad uh, once you get a sort of system down for laying them out. That's it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and found it useful. Hey, if you're finding the channel useful or interesting, please consider subscribing. And if you have any feedback for any of our content, please consider leaving comments. Thank you.